This video is going to be a tutorial on how to do field calibrations with the POS 180. It's going to be as brief as possible because, let's face it, when we're the ones using the tool, we're not the ones that are supposed to be the experts on all the ins and outs of all the gears that are on the inside. So this is going to be brief, but what this is going to do is going to go over how to do the calibration in the field so that you can confidently know that it passes a field calibration and is therefore ready to be used in the field and give you accurate measurements. From the instruction manual in the tablet from Hilti, this is the general idea of what it says, just to give you the idea. It will go over the target axis errors, the horizontal and vertical axis collimation errors, the inclination errors of the tilt sensor, and the axis errors of the automatic prism targeting system, the prism tracker. And if I was to bundle all this together, what this really means is that it's just going to look to the left, to the right, up and down, and make sure that it's always looking back at the same spot over and over and over again. And if it's not, it will adjust for those errors so that when you're measured in the field, it's compensating for all those errors and actually giving you an accurate measurement. So there are some warnings as well associated with this. Number one, make sure that you are operating the tool carefully and it's not vibrating. Carry out each guided step exactly. And remember that imprecise siding of vibration can result in incorrect values. So it's very important to know that you can do this. It is very easy to do field calibrations. You just have to make sure you do it carefully and in an area or a time when there's not a lot of vibration around you and you can completely focus on it. And the fourth one here, in the event of uncertainty, send the tool back to Hilti, and that's always a go-to. It never hurts to just say, you know what, I don't know why this isn't working, I'm sending it back. But I will tell you that even in the event of a drop, I've been able to pick up the tool, calibrate it, and keep it working and keep it accurate because it passes a field calibration. So let's get to it. It does not matter what project you're on, I'm going to go ahead and just use the demo project that I have and press check and jump on in there, but again, it doesn't even matter. I'm going to go to the draw button just so I can open my application window. I'm going to go ahead and drop that down and go to the calibration button here with the wrench and the target plate. That's the symbol that you want to make sure you hit. Now, before we begin, it's important to understand that the tool, when it does calibration, it does a calibration on two faces of the tool face one and face two. Face one is where the tool is looking directly forward with the adjustment knobs for the horizontal and vertical axis on the right side of the tool and the tool is looking forward. Face two is where the tool does a complete 180 turn on the horizontal axis and a 180 turn on the vertical axis. So essentially the tool turns completely but it's still looking at the exact same spot. It looks like it's almost upside down. The knobs are going to be on the left side, and the tool essentially does a measurement looking forward, a measurement looking backwards is what it's doing. Face one and face two, and make sure it does a complete rotation. Now, one of the best practices is to make sure that before you even begin calibration, that the tool is looking in the direction of the target that you're going to be using for your horizontal and vertical collimation test. So just make sure that when you set up, you put the tool on a tripod, you level it, you make sure that it's on face one, looking towards your target, and then you begin. So now, after that discussion, let's go ahead and hit that calibration button, and let's go. And of course, once you hit that, it's going to come up to this screen, where you're going to have the option to do a field calibration, and it's going to pull up all the options you have to do. And if you look at the very bottom, it says the prism tracker requires compensator and horizontal axis slash vertical axis collimation calibrations. So essentially what this is saying is that if you're just concerned about the compensator, you can just run a compensator calibration. If you're concerned about the HAVA collimation, you need to do both compensator and HAVA collimation. If you want to do prism tracker, you need to make sure you do all three. Prism tracker is always the last one to go. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure I check all three of these and we will get to it. So you see I pressed all three. I'm going to press the green check mark and immediately the compensator calibration begins and all it's doing is essentially spinning on the horizontal axis 180, spinning on the vertical axis 180 and checking two different the two different axes on both different sides to make sure it's level on both sides. 
and if it's not level, that it compensates for that and recognizes the error so that it can recognize that error when you actually do your measurements so that it will stay accurate. So I'm going to let this finish up. It shouldn't take too long. Once it is done, you will then see this screen, and you can see at the top it says horizontal and vertical axis collimation, and it's telling you exactly what to do. So essentially, do as it says, put a site down about 100 to 160 feet away. Usually I go on the further end just for my own sake and make sure that the target is about the same height as your scope. That's just my rule of thumb. It says plus or minus five degrees. I can't see that with my eye. All I can do is just guess, but it's usually I just try to keep it right in line and I haven't had a problem. The target plate that I use is the POAW4, which is a reflector tape. And then once I know that I've sighted down with the scope with the crosshairs, that I'm in line with the crosshairs of the reflector tape, then I press the green check mark and I wait for further instructions on the device. So now I'm going to go ahead and just press the green check mark, and you'll see it just starts to run completely on its own. So I'm going to let it run and load until it gives me the next pop-up window, which is basically going to be to realign it and do it again. And now you'll see it comes up with this screen saying, hey, I'm ready again for you. Can you please readjust me to make sure I'm looking at the crosshairs? And you'll notice that the knobs look backwards now. That's okay. So just make sure you keep it looking the way it's looking. Readjust slightly to make sure it's still looking at those crosshairs. If you have to move it slightly, that's fine. And then go ahead and press that green check mark. And you'll see it goes through the calibration process again. And again, you're stuck waiting for it to finish on its own and give you the next step. And now you'll see I'm on Prism Tracker. You can see at the top it says Prism Tracker and it's saying the same thing. Put the Prism about 100 to 160 feet away. The one that I use is either the POA23 or the POA22. Both are flat facing prisms and I just put them up on the wall or stand them up on a, some sort of pole and have them there waiting for me and I just like I did with the crosshairs I look down the scope, sight them in, and I press the green check mark, making sure that the prism location is on the same horizontal plane as my scope. Unlike the field, this is a manual process. The tool is not going to auto lock to the prism. You are scoping it down manually, pressing the green check mark, letting it spin, using the knobs to adjust for whatever error it has to get back to the center of the prism, and uh, pressing the green check mark again. That's how you calibrate the prism tracking. So after all that, let me press the green check mark here. So it does the prism tracking for face one. It's gonna do the auto lock calibration and then it's gonna ask me to do it again for face two. And here we are, face two, do the same thing, sight down and make sure that the prism, that the tool is looking right at the prism. And I'm gonna go ahead and press the green check mark. And now it's just doing its thing, checking, and I'm gonna see the results in a moment. And you can see finally at long last, we have a successful calibration. The compensator passed on its two axes. The collimation of the horizontal and vertical axis passed. Even though you see an error there, it did pass. It basically said, listen, I recognize that there was a slight offset in when I measured the two different faces and it adjusted for that. And I now can be more accurate. And the prism tracking passed. So let's just discuss this real quick. If any of these failed, what I'd recommend is do a field calibration a few more times. Attempt it maybe three or four times until you just cannot pass it over and over and over again. And if that's the case, then when you send it back to repair to Hilti, just express when you did the field calibration what was failing, what wasn't working. And of course, there's a much deeper calibration that they can do on their end. A field calibration is pretty incredible. You do it whenever you want, really. Just make sure that the field conditions are right for it. Uh, and the reason I say do it over and over and over again before you actually send it in is because it can fail just because of vibration. It could fail also just because of somebody walking in front of the prism or because they're walking in front of your laser. There's a lot of reasons it could fail beyond the tool actually being out of calibration. So do it a few times and then after it fails several times and you feel confident that it's an internal tool problem, send it back to LT, let them repair it and let them take care of it on their end. But once it's done, you can literally press that green check mark and get back to work and go, I have done this even after my tool has fallen to the ground from the tripod. 
If it passed the field calibration, I was able to let it keep working. It's incredible, and I hope it really helps you out when you work in your field.